Okay, what we're doing today is we're going to do an actual performance test on a DB products or decibel products isolator to show how well it works at protecting a transmitter from high SWR. This is the actual DB products isolator. This is a model DB4613-1A, which I have tuned to the frequency of this paging system. As you can see, the interconnection is coming off of the PA, going to the isolator, which is actually going to a bi-directional power sensor. Uh, from there, we're going actually up to a bird watt meter and a 400 watt dummy load. The isolator is connected on its protection port or its load port up here to a 100 watt uh, very well dissip heat dissipating load. So let's see what happens. With everything connected the way that it should be, we're going to manually key the transmitter and we can see about 92 watts. Sorry it's a little shaky. Uh, if I had a third set of hands to hold this, it'd be a little smoother. Now that's forward power. We'll just go ahead and check and see if there's anything reflected. Just barely even tries to move the meter. So now, the next step is where we confirm the uh, performance of the isolator. One thing we want to note here, and it may be hard for you to see it, there's a high SWR uh, lamp on the PA of the Quintron paging system. Right now I have disconnected the load and everything. You notice if I transmit, it's kind of hard to see, but the high SWR light kicks on. That's telling us that uh, there's a load problem or antenna problem, which there should be. There's nothing hooked to the output. So let's go reconfigure a couple of things. We have reconfigured the cabling now so that we're going from the PA up to the bird watt meter which in turn is going to the isolator through the bi-directional power meter and to a 400 watt load so let's see what happens in terms of the forward and reflected power measured by the bird watt meter with the load on there and what happens when we take the load off Okay, with the bird watt meter in line, if I manually key the transmitter, once I get around here to the switch, you see close to 100 watts of power. And let's check the reverse. And reverse. Let's reach the switch again. What's around there? Meter doesn't even move. So that means that our load down here is 50 ohms and everything looks good to the transmitter. And the SWR light didn't kick on. Now let's change one other thing. What I have done now is I have disconnected the load from that power meter. So we have an open line. It's like a broken transmission line. And there's a page coming through, but I'm set up for manual. Let's go see what happens on the bird forward and reflected when we key up. One hundred watts forward. And I see no reverse power. Now that's with a totally open transmission line. Of course what that means is the isolator is working and the RF is leaving the isolator going to what should be a transmission line, which is open. It's been, let's imagine it's cut. Antenna's been blown down in a storm, whatever. It's getting redirected through this line and up here to the load. And we can go around here and we can confirm with this SWR light when we manually transmit. The high SWR light does not come on either, which means that this thing, if the transmission line got completely damaged, shorted, open, or destroyed, is not going to be damaged because the isolator is sending the reflected RF all to this load. That's exactly how it's supposed to work. 
that's why they are so valuable on repeaters and transmitters uh, it's also why they're kind of expensive the isolators are ferro magnetic devices uh, not cheap to manufacture they have little mica polished discs in them um, very complex little devices actually but worth every penny if you can afford to buy one and put one in an adequately uh, rated load on your repeater or transmitter you will protect it from a lot of things that would otherwise destroy your transmitter so there you go kk4 ice wishing everyone a great day 73 y'all